Hi everybody, how is everyone doing tonight? I have um, in front of you, this is a, a new Saber, um, this was an eBay purchase, although it wasn't an eBay purchase from eBay in the States, this was purchased from eBay in uh, the UK. Now, since a lot of my favorite Saber companies tend to no longer really be in the United States. Um, I was uh, searching eBay in the UK, um, essentially because I had seen this Sabre uh, listed on the Facebook marketplace. And uh, one thing led to the other, to another. And the seller of this Sabre, who isn't the person who produced this Sabre, uh, suggested that I uh, purchase it from his his uh, eBay listing, which of course was in the UK. Uh, that way, it could save on shipping, and it 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 actually worked out quite well. And and here it is. And what you're seeing in front of you is um, a saber that was produced by a company called Kennedy Custom Props. The manufacturer, the proprietor, is a, a fellow named Adam. I haven't worked with him yet. He actually has an Etsy store, and he has a, a Facebook page that connects to his website, where he has a, a website. And it's the usual fare. He lists the things that uh, he produces and has a gallery of, of his uh, of previous sabers that he's produced. He also does blasters and various other props. Um, unfortunately, currently, the only thing that he had listed on his website was an empty hilt, which has sold. Uh, it, was a, it was a very, very nice empty hilt uh, for 120 euros. It was, a, it was a star killer. And if I had any kind of acumen for uh, doing installations, I would have picked that up because it looked amazing. But as it stands, I have this. And... I looked through his entire gallery and I found a saber that was similar to this called the Accolade. Uh, it wasn't quite the same. The hilt was the same. The decorations were different. So I don't know if the, the saber was named the Accolade specifically as a name for that saber or if that's just the name of the, the hilt model or the series. But I'm calling this at my Accolade because it seems to fit. And um, I'm really, really quite uh, happy with this saber to say the least. Um, now, as far as the hilt goes, just in general, it's very slim, it's very smooth, and it's very refined. I get a thorough, um, Vader's Vault Revan feel from this. The, the milling work that is done on this is, is, to me, it's quite impressive. Uh, so, let's just start from one end to the other. Now, I will preface everything that I'm going to say uh, by letting you know that this is not a sound saber. This is a stunt saber. And I was aware of this uh, when I purchased this saber. But this is a saber that has uh, the Seven Chambers Core FX uh, sound, uh, board. <laughs> no, it's not a sound board. It's just a board. And basically what that means is this is a saber that has several features such as... Um, when the blade when you when you ignite the saber and you'll see this later the blade fades in and fades out rather than just you click a button it's on or off like like you would get out of most stun sabers it has a flicker inherent with the with the design and it also has a, a lock up and a flash on clash now the saber is a tri -cree. And it uses a combination of blue and green to generate the effects. And I find that this saber is very bright, amazingly bright. It really works well with my uh, my uh, TCSS uh, show blade. It has a one inch uh, diameter for you know the standard blade, and it also runs off of a 18650 lithium ion battery which I have yet to figure out how it is removed. Um, but that's that's kind of immaterial because starting from this end, you can see you've got a, a very, very functional um, 
D clip. This is very good quality, not cheap in any way. It doesn't look the most amazing, but it isn't that uh, that uh, cheap, you know, or it's not as cheap as it looks. Now, this is a belt clip. See if I can get this thing on here. Not an easy thing to do one-handed, but there you go. So you get the full belt clip action. And at no point do I feel as though any of this will break. Watch it break right now. No, it will not break. Let's see if I can get this off. There we go. So now I actually have use for the spell clip. If anybody has not seen one, this is your, your standard D-clip to belt uh, mechanism. A little bit different than the CoverTech system, but functional nonetheless. So I'm very happy with that. That is indeed a kill key at the end there, so that does um, save on the, the battery uh, drain, which uh, which is excellent. And uh, as you go up the hill, you can see it's it's pretty uniform. It's just sort of a milling process. I'm I'm assuming that this retention sh uh, screw holds the chassis in place, and my assumption is that if I were to undo this, I should be able to slip this whole unit out to gain access to the battery, but that's that's speculative at this point, and I'm not going to fiddle with it. Uh, as I said, this is very smooth. Um, the These ridges are tactile. Uh, when handling this saber, I have to kind of be leery of of this. This this does tend to be sharp, so it it's not without its um, points of concern, but it's it's not a major issue. This greeble this greeble doesn't seem to do anything. Um, I haven't forced it. I imagine it might be possible to to remove this, and that might be what causes a chassis to come off. So that that's another thing to explore. Um, that that wouldn't be completely uh, unexpected. A lot of sabers these days tend to work in that fashion, but I don't really know at this point. Until I do a little bit more research, I'm not going to fiddle with that. Now, initially I thought this was kind of like a residue for something that maybe had been removed, but it seems to be anodized on there. So this is deliberate weathering effect. And as you can see, uh, if I can show you, go back here, uh, there is a bit of battle damage. I really appreciate that. That's very nice and very subtle weathering and uh, battle damage throughout the saber, which which really adds to the realism of this particular piece. Now you got a tactical switch that's recessed, so you don't have to worry about accidentally turning this thing on or off. And it has a kind of a momentary function, so that adds to the to the uh, you know, the capacity to prevent this thing from you know, having too many uh, having too many issues. Um, so far I've been swinging this around and there has been no issues. It has this weird little feature where there's a, a bit of a, I don't know if you can see it, and you know, the lighting is not optimal. There it is, right by that greeble. It's just this weird little, there's it's another blade retention spot, which kind of seems to reinforce the fact that, you know, I really do think that this is a point of contact where something comes apart. Soon you can see the rest of this. It's kind of gross, but <laughs> I like it. It's intentionally designed that way. So the greeble has a, a bit of a knurling on it, and that's nice. Working our way up to the emitter, you have several. You have a well, not several, but you have a, a major choke point here, which is kind of hindered a little bit by the greeble. So I've been handling it just about here, placing my hand, you know, anywhere between here and here. Now I do kind of think that this saber would benefit from a wrap. Um, you know, the, the, there's a possibility that if you're swinging this too much, it could fly out of your hand because there's nothing to really stop your, you know, stop the the hilt from riding up out of your hand, but. Oh well, so I love you. <laughs> uh, so this greeble here is a blade retention screw. The blade is in there rather tightly. Uh, the it, it just sort of barely fit, and I had to really kind of wrench it in there. So this blade is in there for a long haul until uh, until I decide to remove it. Um, here's a, a little PSA. I found that if you have a, a blade that's sort of stuck into a hilt. You know, and it's just a polycarbonate blade, as most are. Uh, usually, just putting a blow dryer and 
generating a little bit of heat, not enough to actually damage the LED or the saber. You have to be cognizant of what you're what you're heating up. Um, but just using a blow dryer on this will kind of it kind of stimulates the the molecular st structure to some degree, so you can actually sort of work this out and without damaging too much. Because the alternative is to just sort of wrench it or start hacking away at things, and you don't really want to be doing that. So, um, that's that's my word of advice. That's what I found worked in. Um, I had a I'm I'm planning on sending my re my Saber Forge Redeemer into Saber Forge for repairs, and I had to remove the blade to do that, and that was hopelessly in there, just completely seized. And uh, the process I just described to you actually uh, worked quite well, and I was able to get the blade out. And now I just have to get off my lazy butt and uh, ship that thing off. But I've had other things preoccupying me. So anyway, moving on. So you have this nice little beveled section right here leading to a, a slanted emitter, which is gorgeous. And then you have the this refined sort of what would be an insert. This is all milled, by the way. So this is not this is not cheap work. This is really, really well done. You know, lateral cuts and whatnot. So this little rounded section here is all filled with with weathering. And then there's more battle damage here. More weathering. Uh and then the uh the blade holder right here. So it's it's I admit it's not much to look at, but when you have this in your hand, it just it really feels like you're holding an actual legitimate lightsaber. Now, functionality. Uh, well, actually, first thing, it came with a blade plug. I don't know if this was a custom-made blade plug for this particular saber, but this is a very good quality blade plug. And I almost think this is a Saber Trio blade plug uh, because they do offer black brass and uh, a silver version as standard, both a long and a short um, whatever you call this nub and um, I don't know it could be I'm not too sure but this is a very good blade plug and it looks really nice um, in this hilt now if if it weren't such a chore to remove the blade I would I would show that to you but we are going to skip it because I am lazy and here we go let's see if I can get this kill key out of here now obviously you take the kill key out there is not going to be a boot up because there is no sound and as you can see Here's your recharge port, and this should hopefully work with any of my 3.7 volt uh, rechargers. I currently have one from uh, JQ Sabres that seems to be working well on all my Sabres. It's one of the more functional ones I have. Now, to turn this thing on, uh, one hit kind of boots it up, or powers it on, and another turns the blade on. And this is a super bright, super bright, blade you can see the flicker in the camera even if the color is not accurate i am very impressed with the performance of these leds on this blade this is this is almost vader's vault bright it may not look it on the camera but this is impressive uh, so i don't know what the wattage is on these my research didn't, uh, didn't turn up too much in the way of that but um this is to my um <laughs> ultimate glee a really, really gorgeous uh, Arctic Blue Blade. I am just thrilled that, uh, by the color that I received uh, with this uh, this blade. So <laughs> you have a a simple samurai who's extremely happy because uh, I'm I'm just Arctic Blue is my jam. Anyway, so to get uh, your um, lock up you basically push to the uh, tactile switch once and it's on and there you go it's going nuts pardon all the paperwork and stuff this is a, a, a borrowed desk i didn't really feel like going down to the apartment to do this uh this is causing all kinds of like strife on the camera it's not really it, it, trust me when this is in front of you it's it's quite impressive uh so it, it's pretty simple and of course let me see if i can get this to work i'll do it on my leg it, it does a lock up or not a lock up but a clash and it kind of in the camera it kind of lingers 
That's a really, really nice touch. And lastly, what the effects does, which is different, and I already mentioned this, but when you, you have to actually hold down the momentary switch for about a second and a half, and it powers off, and it fades out. So when you turn it on, it fades on. When you turn it off, it fades out. My cat is here. Where are you? You over there? See, there he is. Never far away from me. He is a good boy. Uh, on and off. So, you get the gist. So, why? Why Why a stunt saber like this? Well, uh, essentially, this is sort of a piece, as the name of the company implies, Kennedy Custom Props. Um, this is designed to be used, essentially, um, as a showpiece in a performance. And generally speaking, when... Uh, when sabers such as this are used in lightsaber shows and performances, um, they don't they don't really need sound. Um, that's that's not really that important because generally, be be over the din of the people watching and inherent noises going on all over the place, and and and, and they all the also there there may be some acting involved, and you need to hear the voice actors. So it's sufficient, generally speaking, that you just get. Uh, the, the visual effects and and a saber like this provides you with the visual effects that just a standard static uh stun saber won't provide so this serves a very specific purpose and um and it, it's it's quite amazing uh the other thing is uh when people are doing performances and they're recording it um they they're always adding well they add a lot of the effects afterward but i imagine having this lit up sufficiently and responding the way it does it might make it easier for editing and special effects purposes and and then they add the sounds afterward so that pretty much uh, sums up the reasoning for this so uh that being said i'm going to give my uh accolades ha 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 to uh kennedy uh custom um props and uh and adam uh for creating a, a very fine piece i am feeling compelled to actually do a video that's going to compare this to my vader's vault uh, simply because they're so similar in size and machining and um and quality in a, in a weird sort of way because this was I, I i didn't really pay that much for it for this i don't really feel like elaborating on how much i spent i possibly spent too much but I don't think so. And with the conversion rate, yeah, I, I, I kind of really wanted this one uh, the moment I saw it. Uh, so I'll just give you one more bow to stern <laughs> visual uh, eye candy here. Have I told, have I mentioned how happy I am with this thing? My my cup hath my cup hath runneth <laughs> my cup runneth over. I'm um, I'm gonna be getting my uh my saber trio reaver on Friday. Yeah, it's just an FX. It's not a CFX, but I got my CFX jam. It's gonna be taken care of by Genesis Cup Custom Sabers. I've got a dark light vector coming, and I am so absolutely. I'm gonna. <laughs> I have so many sabers. It's just it, my collection's just obscene right now. And I'm going broke, <laughs> but uh, the Reaver. I'll review the Reaver. It's a that that uh, sports the uh, the Pico Crumble, and it's a dark side. So there you go. So anyway, um, I recommend if anybody's interested in uh, in Kennedy uh, Custom Sabers, there's plenty of resources. I imagine if you're inclined to have him a uh, commission and have him, you know, create something for you. Um, he would be willing to do that. And I'm going to keep an eye on his sites. And if he has any pieces showing up, I'll, I'll definitely, uh, look into, you know, get in, getting a, you know, something they might create. If he, if he makes a sound saber, then I'm, I'm definitely going to be interested in that. Uh, but look at his galleries, look at some of the work that he's done. Uh, he's produced some amazing pieces and this sort of, this sort of extends to uh, the video I did about the Etsy stores and finding places other than the majors. Um, I'm, I'm finding myself kind of really getting away from Ultra Sabres and Saber Forge and, and I'm just looking for beautiful and exotic pieces. Um, there are so many people out there producing so many amazing things. You could go on Facebook and just look at the listings that people have on all these different, uh, all these different sites. 
uh, all these different pages, uh, you know, like forums and whatnot of just what people are working on. Uh, there's a fellow named Ethan, and he seems to specialize in the, and he, I forget what his, uh, what his, what his company's called, his Saber company, but he sort of specializes in doing some amazing work on Bastion. So, uh, eventually when I, when I come across money, I'll, I'll have words with him and I'm going to have him do a, a, a bit of a, bit of work on, on my bastion and uh <laughs> he's gonna make that into a work of art um that's what i'm getting into this hobby as as just sort of sort of like an art collector i'm just collecting art at this point um and i, I love the refinement and the and just just the skills that i'm seeing expressed by people it's just a wonderful time to be into this holiday. It's definitely a renaissance. Um, so I will leave it at that. I'm going to stop gushing. And um, I'm just going to give you one uh, eye full of uh, the blade color here. And uh, I will bid you adieu. And uh, that really looks horrible on camera, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, well, this isn't too bad. <laughs> anyway, hope everyone enjoyed this video. Uh you can uh, you can go ahead and subscribe or like, comment, whatever you want to do. We'll see how long this whole uh, YouTube shtick holds out. Uh, things are a little bit weird right now with uh, YouTube, but I think it's all going to work out. We're all going to be able to continue being good friends. Alrighty then. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you later. Bye.